Welcome back, everyone. Junra from Kangtung here. In this module, we're going to talk about how consumer group works in Kafka. In Kafka, we separated the way how we store the data from the processing of that. And then the processing is typically done in the consumer applications. And consumer group is a great way of scale out those consumer instances. Once you define a consumer group, the load of the data you are subscribing to can be divided evenly among those consumers, and then they can be processing those uh, records or events in parallel. The unit of distributing the load is partition. So for a given partition here you are subscribing to, we are only going to give that to one of the instances of the consumer in this consumer group. Defining a consumer group is pretty simple. You just need to define a consumer group, and then you make a subscription to the set of topics that you want to consume. Once you started the consumer group, the load will be evenly divided among those instances of the members in the group. And then if there's a new member joins or the existing member leaves, the load can be rebalanced among the remaining members. The workforce behind consumer group is a concept called group coordinator. Group coordinator is responsible for, for coordinate the communication among all the members in the consumer group and is also responsible for coordinating the assignment of the workload to those members. In a typical Kafka cluster, there will be multiple of those group coordinators. And this allows the load from different consumer group to be evenly distributed among those different coordinators. Now, let's look at how a consumer group is started. So in this case, we have a consumer group. Let's say we have two members in this consumer group, and they are starting at the same time in parallel. The first thing each of these consumer instances needs to do is to identify the group coordinator for this group. So on the broker side, we use an internal topic called consumer offset to store all the metadata about this particular group. And then it typically has multiple partitions. And then the group coordinator for this consumer group is determined by the leader of the partition this consumer group will be hashed into. Later on, you will see this concept of internal topic will be used multiple times to manage various other things. So once the group broker identified the group coordinator for this consumer group, it will send its endpoint, including the host and port, back in the response. The next thing what the uh, consumer instance will need to do is to send a join group request to this group coordinator. In the join group request, it will include the subscription it has. One of the tricky things we have to deal with is we want the assignment of the load to those consumer members to be pluggable, to be determined by the consumer instances in separate broker, because we want to provide more flexibility to the application. Because of that, the group coordinator actually doesn't know how to assign the load. So instead, what it does is to pick one of the group members, uh, typically the first me member who joined the group, as the group leader. And it will let the group leader to make the decision of assigned work among those members. So what we'll do is it will include all the member information, including member IDs and the subscription back to this group coordinator. For the rest of the non-group leader consumer instances, it will just send its member ID. Once the group leader has received the complete member list and its subscription, it will use its pluggable assigner to assign the topic partitions among those member instances and uh, we will be sending the response in the results in a separate request called sync group request to the group coordinator. Every other member will also be sending a similar request, including its member ID. And the group coordinator will take the data it received from the group leader and then send the assignment for each of the members back to each of the consumer instances. Now, let's look at some of the assignment strategies. One of the assignment strategy is called a range partition. In this case, what is work is it will distribute the partition at each individual topic level. So it will look at the first topic and divide up its partitions among the consumer members, and it will go through the next topic and then do the same thing. As you can see in this case, um, both partition zero, the partition zero from both topic will be assigned to consumer one, and similarly, partition one from both topics will be assigned to consumer two. But the rest of the consumers will be idle because there's no work for them. Now, for the range partition, there's a particular important use case for that. 
it's pretty important for doing co-locating, uh, co-located joins. For example, you may have these topics with shared keys. So all the records with the same key will be assigned to the same partition. By having the same partition assigned to the consumer, they can easily do the joining across these two topics locally. Another commonly used partition assignment strategy is called round robin. In this case, um, we just tear down the topic boundary. We just line up all the topic partitions, no matter which uh, topic they're coming from, and then we'll just assign them uniformly across those consumer instances. The benefit of this is this actually allows more degree of parallelism because all the partitions across all the topics can be used, but you just don't get a co-location. Another variant of round robin is called sticky partitioner. So this improves the round robin a little bit by trying to do a best effort of sticking to the previous assignment during the next reassignment. So you try to reduce this number of partitions that need to be moved around across those consumer instances. In Kafka, we also provide a way for the consumer to keep track of where they have consumed. In Kafka, keeping track of consumer is relatively easy because for a given partition, it's always given to a single consumer and all the records within the partition are always given to the consumer in offset order. So the consumer really needs to track the last offset it has consumed for each of the partitions. In order to keep track of the position, the consumer can issue a commit offset request to the group coordinator. The coordinator will then persist that information in the underlying internal topic. If the consumer group instance is restarted, the first thing it can do is to call, make a request to the coordinator to retrieve its last committed offset. And once it has the offset, and it can resume the consumption from that particular offset. If this consumer instance is started for the very first time and there's no saved position for this consumer group, then you can either uh, start consuming from the very beginning of this topic uh, partition or the very latest. The group coordinator, of course, can fail, but because the internal offset commit topic is replicated, the group coordinator, uh, if it fails, can easily fail over as the new leader for this internal topic partition. So we can handle failure in a pretty resilient way as well. Sometimes a rebalance will be needed among the consumer uh, instances within the same group. This can happen because one of the instances fails the heartbeat with the group coordinator, which indicates this consumer instance has failed, or a new consumer instance has joined the group, or maybe a new partition has been added to the subscribed topic. And if you are using wildcard subscription, some of the new topic being created could match the subscription that you are making. So all those can trigger a rebalance so that the consumers can be rebalanced. Now let's look at the rebalance process. Once the group coordinator noticed that rebalance is needed, the first thing it will do is to send a response piggyback on the heartbeat to indicate to each of the consumer instances that a rebalance is needed. Once the consumer received this rebalance notification, it will go through a rebalance process. Some of people may be familiar with this stopped word rebalance process. This is actually an issue we used to have, and I will explain uh, what some of the issues are in our old rebalance protocol and what are some of the improvements we have made since. Let's say in this example, initially you have only two consumers and a new consumer, which is consumer three joins, which triggers a rebalance among all the uh, three consumers. So the first thing the existing two consumers have to do um, is to revoke the assigned partitions they have. And sometimes the consumers may, may have maintained some internal states for each of the assigned partitions. In that case, it will also clear up the state associated with those assigned partitions. Then all those consumer instances will go through the process of sending the join request and then sync request to the group coordinator. In the end, the new partition assignment will be received by each of the consumer instances. Then the consumer instance, if they have the state, will need to rebuild the state corresponding to those newly assigned partitions. Now, what are some of the issues with this whole process? Well, there are a couple of issues. The first issue is the need to rebuild some of the states. As I mentioned, I think in the earlier uh, slide, that during the rebalance, the consumer instance first revoke partitions and then clear up the state, and only to rebuild some of those 
when the new partitions are signed. And in this case, you can see partition 0 and partition 1, they actually are signed back to the same consumer instance. So rebuilding their state is actually wasteful. Sometimes, you know, if you have a large state, this can take some time. So this is the first problem of unnecessary rebuilding some of the state for the consumer applications. The second issue is what we call the post processing. As you can see, since the, each of the consumer instance revoke those partitions immediately, the processing of, of all the records for all the partitions have stopped. And it only resumes until the new partitions have been assigned, which can take a little bit of time. At least in this particular case, you can see the pausing for all the processing of the records in partition 0 and partition 1 are necessary because they are actually assigned back to the same consumer instance. In theory, you know, they could have just continued processing during this rebalance per, uh, process. Now, let's look at some of the improvements we have made to address these two issues. The first thing is we are, use, we are using an improved version of this sticky partition assigner to address the first issue where the states need to be rebuilt unnecessarily. So the improvement is, in this case, during the rebalance, initially we won't be clean up the state during the beginning of the rebalance. Instead, we try to rebuild the state only when the new partition assignment has been reached. So in this case, since partition 0 and partition 1 are assigned back to the same instance, they actually don't need to have their state rebuilt because we know that they are the same as the previous assignment. Another improvement we made is through what we call cooperative sticky partition assigner. This is used to solve the second issue, which is the soft processing issue. So what this will do is, at the beginning of the rebalance, each of the consumer will not immediately revoke the previously assigned partition. Instead, they will just include those previously assigned partition as part of join group to the coordinator. During the rebalance, the group leader will try to only send back the revoked partition for each of the consumer instances. In this case, only partition 2 will be revoked from the consumer 1. And for partition 0 and partition 1's data, they can continue to be processed by consumer 1 and consumer 2 because they are never revoked. So the processing for those records don't stop at this point. And in the second round of rebalance, what we'll do is the group coordinator will now, uh, having given a chance for the consumer instance to revoke some of the unneeded um, partitions, it will then assign the revoked partition back to the new instance. In this case, it will re reassign the re previous revoked partition 2 to the new consumer. As you can see, in the whole process, the processing for partition 0 and partition 1 never stopped. This is actually a big improvement from the previous case. The last thing we can consider to improve this is to avoid rebalance completely. Because in some of the common cases, the reason we need to rebalance is a consumer instance is restarted. Because you may want to restart a consumer instance for upgrading, for picking up some new configuration. In this case, you know the consumer instance will come back pretty quickly. So you can actually choose not to move the partitions around in this phase, and then just wait for this new consumer to come back. To achieve this, we are, what we are introducing is a new a capability called st a static group membership. In this model, you will be assigning a static member ID for each of the consumer instances in the group. Then during the assignment, will be, the group leader will be deterministically assigned the partitions to the same consumer instance with the same group member ID. And in this case, if you stop the consumer and then restart it, when you stop the consumer, the consumer instance won't be sending the leave group the request to the, to the group coordinator. So there's no cons rebalance that's triggered. Instead, the group coordinator just waits for this consumer instance to, to come back. As long as you can come back uh, before this session timeout, then it, the group coordinator just thinks this consumer instance ne has never gone away and will give back the same partition assignment to this consumer instance. This actually is much more convenient because the consumer never need to uh, participate in the rebalance and then do things like uh, rebuilding state. Yeah, so that's the end of this module. Thanks for listening.